Welcome to Reclaimed Terrain. In this episode, I am walking you through five productivity tips to implement that will result in higher quality work, meaning you're going to get things done more efficiently and effectively than before when you implement these tips, at least that's what happened for me. And in addition to that, it also has helped me to work with my energy. And this is really important to me because working with my energy helps me have a higher quality of life. And in addition to that, if you didn't know this, I actually deal with chronic migraines, chronic fatigue. I have a hard time focusing sometimes. So working with my energy is extremely important because truth be told, in this season of life, I don't have that much of it, so I want to use what I've got efficiently and effectively, which leads me to the five productivity tips that I truly believe will result in higher quality work when you implement them. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Hey queen, welcome to Reclaim Terrain. I'm your host, Hannah Brindley, daughter of the king, certified life coach, and faith-fueled business mentor. I know you are so sick of feeling like you've worked so hard in your business with little to no reward while staying in the same cycle of self-sabotaging tendencies you know are keeping you stuck. And because of that, I know you are craving to end this never-ending cycle of self-destruction and cultivate a successful Holy Spirit-led business without letting it become your idol. So if you are ready to be fueled by faith over flesh, fight your battle spiritually instead of physically, take bold action on your God-given callings, and finally create that thriving faith fuel business, then you're in the right place. Go ahead and reheat your coffee, grab a notebook and pen, and let's dive in. So the very first productivity tip I want to give you today truly changed the game for me, and I am dead serious. (laughs) Okay, like this one was huge. And I am so glad I implemented this. I think I started implementing this about a year and a half or two years ago, and I don't think I'm ever going back. So just know this is so good. And I cannot take credit for this one. So shout out to Ashton Smith, who taught me about this. It it truly changed the game, y'all. I am not even exaggerating. And this tip is to rotate your client weeks and your creative weeks. This was crucial for me. Up until I started implementing this, I was trying to create and see clients in every single week. And that was really overwhelming for me. That was not working. I had a really hard time focusing on content one morning, then going and getting on client calls. And then the next day having client calls, then content. That just did not work for my brain, (laughs) okay? And essentially what ended up happening is I would have like 12 one-on-one clients and I was seeing them every single week. And while I loved them, like I really loved them, I was starting to resent my business because I felt like I didn't have the creative space or energy to work on my own business anymore or create content. And that was really hard on me. And so essentially Ashton calls them A, B weeks. So A weeks being either, I can't remember if she does the client week or the creative week, but M and B being the other one, but I just call them client weeks and creative weeks. I even have in my Google calendar, Literally every single week is a creative week. Every single week is a client week. And on the client weeks, that's when I get on calls like my queen immersion days or my checking calls with my clients or my group coaching calls. This is also when I like to schedule any interviews or live videos or basically anything that requires me to get on video or audio with another human being. Okay, this just works really, really well for my brain. Because I know during my client weeks, I'm going to be on, I'm going to be in a communication and coaching headspace, which is very different than a creative and vision casting headspace. 
So I like to do that every other week. And then on my creative weeks, that's when I like to pour into my own business. That's when I like to vision cast for the future. That's when I like to create content and produce podcast episodes, write content or film reels. And having separate weekly focuses really gave me the space to be able to do that and actually enjoy coaching again because my weeks are separated in that way. I love to coach just like I love to create content. But the thing is, if I'm only creating content, I start wishing I had some coaching clients. And if I only coach, I start really wanting to create content again. And I knew I needed to do both efficiently and effectively. And I couldn't do that before I implemented this. So again, shout out to Ashen Smith because this was a game changer for me. <laughs> Also, I want to touch on the fact that I mentioned I did weekly one-on-one -on -one calls before I shifted into this. When I shifted into rotating client and creative weeks, I made the call to stop doing weekly calls and transitioned into a new business model. And that has been incredible for me. In this business model, I do teach my clients inside of FCA, but essentially what I'm mentioning here is if you are currently seeing clients every single week and you want to implement this, if you are doing, you know, weekly 45 to 60 minute calls, maybe transition them into bi-weekly 60 to 90 minute calls. I've also found this is really fantastic for the client as well because you can think of that client week as their preparation week and getting things ready and getting their action items together. But then the next week is really focused on implementation for them. So if you can't tell, I am a big fan of this and I highly, highly recommend it. Highly. <laughs> so that being said, let's move on to tip number two. Now, tip number two is essentially a technique that the client and creative week essentially uses, and that is batching focuses. So essentially, like I mentioned in tip one, during the client weeks, you are focusing on clients. During the creative weeks, you are focusing on creativity and content and curriculum or anything on the back end that you need for your business. You can also call it a CEO week, right? But essentially, tip number two is batching focuses and not just for your weeks, but for your days and for your work blocks. What are you going to be doing each individual day of the week during the time you are working? So here's an example. Let's say it's a Monday during my creative week. And so let's say that Mondays are actually devoted to marketing. Now, this essentially would mean that on Mondays during work blocks, the focus would be on creating marketing content for that week. So from two to four, say you're batching your task. That's when you would focus on creating marketing content for that week. Or maybe it's three to five. Or maybe it's 12 to two and then three to five. Essentially, you need to know when you have time to batch your task and then what the tasks are going to be. And so essentially, batching focuses just means you are grouping similar tasks together and focusing on them. This is actually really good for your brain because if you go from creation to client calls to admin, it takes more time for your brain to catch up to what you are actually doing and focusing on. And it takes longer for you to actually get into the zone of what you're doing. So if you actually decide, hey, I want to focus on just creating marketing content for the week, it's going to take you that one time to get into the zone and then you don't have to switch task. So essentially you're doing as much as you can on one type of task and one work block or even in one day if you have multiple work blocks throughout the day. So a little recap so far is that we first want to rotate between our client weeks and our creative weeks. Then after that, we want to make sure that we have specific batching focuses for each day of the week. Then from there is tip number three, which is to implement the Pomodoro method. I love 
the Pomodoro method. And essentially what this is, if you've never heard of this, I work in Pomodoros and working in Pomodoros means that I work in 25 minute increments. And you can essentially think of this like high intensity interval training, but for productivity. So essentially during my two hour work time, so say I have a two hour block of time that I am working, I am in the zone for 25 minutes, like no distractions, no notifications on my phone. I've got focus music playing. My phone is across the room. All of my distractions are gone. And then after those 20 minutes are up, because I literally set a timer, if you don't want to use your phone, you do not have to, you can use a kitchen timer, you can use some other timer, you can do it on your watch, whatever you've got. If you need to do it on your phone, just put it across the room. No big deal. But essentially the key is to have zero distraction during this time. And then take a five minute break, do some jumping jacks, go outside, walk around for a second, use the restroom, do what you got to do but then come back and do another 25 minutes. This has worked really, really well for me because I have this tendency to get overwhelmed if I sit down and I'm like, okay, I've got to work for two hours or three hours. That is very overwhelming for me and also a recipe for distraction because if I think in my head, oh my goodness, I've got two hours of work to do, that is one, really overwhelming to me and two, I will start distracting myself with things because I have to sit and work for two hours. So I will start scrolling or I will start browsing on my internet or I will just start counting things on my wall because I'm trying to distract myself from my work. And then before I know it, I've got 15 minutes left in my two hour work block and I got nothing done. So that being said, the 25 minute increments have been really, really great for me. However, some of my clients really like doing 50 minutes of work and then 10 minutes of rest. Some of them like to do 15 minutes of work and like three minutes of rest. So find what works for you. I have found that 25 minutes works perfectly for me, but also when I'm having a really hard time doing a specific task, sometimes I will tell myself I'm just going to get it done in 10 minutes and I'll set a 10 minute timer just to try and trick my brain to just go ahead and get it done. So do what you've got to do with this. So that being said, I want to move on to tip number four. And this tip has also been so incredible. And it's been really incredible because it's helped alleviate some work anxiety. And so this tip is to read scripture, pray, and worship right before you start working. This has been incredible for my mental health, my spiritual health, my emotional health, my relationship with my work. It is truly so good. And I used to only do this in my morning routine, but one day I just had the urge to do this right before I started working. I was probably dealing with a lot of anxiety that day, and I just knew I needed to get into my scripture, read one chapter out loud, pray, and sing a worship song right before I started work. And I have been doing that since, and I have noticed a dramatic difference in my well-being, in my mentality, in the way I view my work. And I highly, highly, highly recommend it for you as well. It doesn't have to take a million years, but like I said, read a chapter out loud, pray a prayer, and listen to a worship song and praise him. And this is also something you can be doing on your breaks as well. I like to do this on my lunch break right before I come back into work. I like to do this sometimes on my five minute break and I'll make it a 10 minute break. Whoops. It's okay because I'm worshiping the Lord. That's what I need to be doing and that's what I want to be doing every single day. So please, please, please give this a try. Just give it a whirl. I think it will change your life. (laughs) I'm not kidding. It will because it's Jesus. And then tip number five is to set appropriate boundaries. Now, this is going to look very different for everyone, but I wanted to give you a few boundaries that I have set just because 
I think it'll give you an idea of what you can be setting boundaries on in your work life. So essentially for me, one of the hardest boundaries I had to put in place was that I only take calls during certain times. I do not stay on really late at night. I don't do really early mornings. I have specific call times now and that is a hard boundary for me specifically because again I deal with chronic migraines and chronic fatigue and lack of focus and I know if I'm doing calls outside of a particular time frame I'm more likely going to be triggering a migraine and I for one don't want to do that to myself and also don't want to do that to my clients because because when I coach them I want to show up as my best for them and when my migraines are triggered I'm not my best. And so I know if I'm not setting those hard boundaries, I'm not going to show up the same way I would if I didn't have a migraine. I'm going to be showing up differently. So I had to put that in place for myself. Now with that, I've also set boundaries on my work hours. I don't work outside of certain times. Every once in a while, like if I have a deadline or something's coming up, I will work outside of those times or, you know, maybe something in my personal life has come up. I had to take a random day off and needed to work on a Saturday. I will do it if I have to. That is the beauty of having your own business, but I also want to put boundaries and parameters in place when I know I'm going to not be working. And this is really, really critical for having that quote unquote work-life balance. Now, another boundary that I have put in place involves the phone. And this typically rotates between three different things. So I'm just going to share all three of them. So the very first one is to limit your notifications on your phone. Just silence things. Okay, silence all the notifications. Sometimes this works really well for me, sometimes it doesn't. I have actually personally found that when I turn my notifications off, I have a tendency to go to the app and just check more frequently than I would if I had my notifications turned on. I know that sounds crazy, but that's that's the truth. But I mentioned that just in case it would work for you. Now, the other option is to actually delete your app. <laughs> so <laughs> if that's Instagram, it's Instagram. If it's Facebook, it's Facebook. And I also use Voxer for my clients. So after my work hours, I have found that if I just delete the app off my phone, it works wonders. The messages will still be there when I re-download the app or when I log into it on the computer. So usually I really like to do this with Voxer, Instagram, Messenger for Facebook, and Facebook. It is wonderful because it keeps me from going to the apps and just checking Again, I know that sounds crazy, but I just have a tendency to do it. And so deleting the apps off my phone have been very useful. Little disclaimer here though, if you have reels on Instagram saved as drafts, please do not delete your app. Please save all the reels to your phone first and then delete the app. If you delete the app when you have reels drafts saved, it will delete your drafts. So please make sure to save them to your phone before you do that. Just wanted to throw that out there just in case. But essentially when I am not working, I do like to implement this by just deleting all four of those apps that I had mentioned. And then another way I like to set boundaries on my phone is to turn my phone off. And typically I like to turn my phone off when I am in my creative flow. So if I am working on podcast content or if I am working on you know, stuff for Instagram or a blog or whatever it is I'm doing, essentially it's usually during my creative week, but when I'm having a creative block, I like to turn my phone off. That has been huge because again, it's during my work hours, so I don't just want to delete the apps and then have to re-download it when I stop my work block, but I like to turn my phone off so I can stay focused with what my task is for that moment. And so next up, I have two more boundaries that I want to share with you before we wrap up this episode, but this next boundary is to take breaks while working. And you may be like, that's not a boundary, but oh, it is. It is a boundary because 
I have this tendency to just keep working sometimes and I don't take breaks and then all of a sudden my blood sugar will just drop and then I've got this headache that turns into a migraine and it is a hot mess express over here. So please take breaks while you work. Take breaks before you think you need a break and that has been huge for me this whole idea of taking a break before I think I need a break because I need a little bit more energy. I don't want to work myself in the ground where I feel burnt out from that day. I want to keep my energy high. So that's why I love using the Pomodoro method where I work for 25 minute increments and then take a break. And sometimes I take longer breaks than five minutes, y'all. It's all right. It's just part of the process. But I know for me personally, I need those breaks or I'm going to get really worn down. And during those breaks, I always like to try and get in some movement or get outside if I can, get into scripture and eat some healthy snacks and drink some electrolytes because my brain needs those things if I'm going to keep being creative and going to keep up with the high energy. Because remember, again, I struggle with low energy to begin with. I don't need a crash. So that's why these breaks are critical and why it is a hard boundary for me. With that being said, please make sure you are taking breaks and have enough space to take breaks between client calls if you have client calls. This has also been a learning process for me, but please, I promise your brain will thank you. Now, my last boundary is to take one day a week with absolutely no work at all. If you can make it two, make it two, but at least one and let this be your Sabbath. I have personally loved incorporating a Sabbath day into my weeks. Honoring the Sabbath day has made such a difference, not just in my productivity levels or how much I get done, but in my well-being, in my spiritual life, because a true Sabbath is meant to honor the Lord. That is what it's meant to be. It's not meant to be just, you know, I'm going to stop working. Yes, don't work, but take the time to truly honor the Lord. That could look like going on a hike. That could look like dancing. That could look like being with your friends. Just don't forget the true meaning of Sabbath. It's it's not just to not work. It's to honor him and to honor his creation and to honor what he is doing in you and in others. So remember the Sabbath day. This is so important and this has been critical for me to implement in my life not just for my business but for my relationship with him and that's a wrap my friends so as a recap the five different productivity tips to implement that will result in higher quality work is one rotating client weeks and creative weeks two batching focuses three utilizing the Pomodoro method, four, reading scripture, praying, and worshiping before work, and five, implementing specific boundaries. And so now that you know those five productivity tips, it is time to take intentional aligned action towards building your business. And this is exactly why I created Faith Fueled Coach Academy to help women like you finally go full-time online in their coaching business with the Holy Spirit leading us both. If you are ready to start and scale your faith-fueled coaching business, please go ahead and head on over to www.hannahbrinley.com slash FCA to learn more about the program and get on the wait list for when we launch again. It's www.hannahbrinley.com slash FCA. That will also be linked in the show notes for you. And if you are curious on how I coach, I highly recommend checking out my free Attract Your Queendom training. This training takes an immersive approach to attracting your idol client to you so that you can then go and create content that will magnetize them to you efficiently and effectively. I've had multiple people tell me that this training alone has changed the game for them. And if you go through it, please send me a DM over on Instagram at Hannah Brindley and let me know your thoughts. 
you can find this training at bit.ly slash attract your queendom. That's B-I-T dot L-Y slash attract your queendom. And it's also linked in the show notes for you for your convenience. And that's all for now. So I will see you in the next episode. Bye friend. Hey queen, don't head out just yet. If this podcast has blessed you in some way, It would mean the absolute world to me if you left a written review of the show over on Apple Podcasts. It truly lights a fire in me knowing how God has impacted you through this platform. And since I absolutely adore connecting with you, please, please, please screenshot this episode or your review and post it on your stories on Instagram and tag me at Hannah Brindley. I can't wait to see you over there. So much love to you.